All right, Aaron, take it away. All right. Hello, everyone. So glad to see you all on this Monday afternoon, evening, whatever it is for you. And um, we're going to do some things today, which I know is kind of always a need um, around how to deal, what to do when you feel blocked or stuck or kind of thwarted by a blank page or you're not really sure what to do next. And that's really what we're going to be focusing on today. And kind of perfect timing. Just before I came home for this live stream, I was doing, um, I was looking at a video from the Met Museum from their vault, which if you don't know about it, they release videos from their video archives. And you can see them on YouTube and they're fascinating. And today we watched the video from of Alice Neal from 1978. And one of the things she said is that she's incre is that she felt like she was very indecisive in her life. And she could never choose between coffee or tea or what kind of food she wanted to eat or what she wanted to do, but that she always felt confident when she stood in front of her canvas. And she said, the first time I sat in front of the canvas, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. And so that's kind of the, the starting point for today for what we're going to be um, exploring in different ways in our art journal. So a little preview of coming attractions. I'm going to be working my way through the three different journals that I have in progress right now the Art Journal Snacks one, my Auxiliary Art Journal Snacks one, and a third journal that I've been playing with. So we'll try out a bunch of different things. I'm going to give you a lot of different ways to start pages, and then I'll show some different ways to kind of finish up pages that are maybe in that stuck place of, I don't know what to do next with this. Okay, so that'll be our starting point. You can see I wrote down the quote from today and I was sitting there watching the video just like oh my gosh I can't believe she's saying this because this is exactly the feeling that I'm hoping people to have with their art journal so I'm going to set that journal aside and go to one of those very scary white pages in the art journal okay so there it is the blank white page right and um, as we are a little more than halfway through this journal, as probably a lot of you have noticed, if you use any wet media in your journal, that you're starting to get a little bit of bleed through there where the stitches are, um, which is like my favorite thing, um, because it means that this blank white page is not quite so scary. So um, one of the things, and many of you know this, that my favorite way to start a page is with a scribble. But today I wanted to show starting with kind of a different kind of a scribble. So I'm going to use some ink in a dropper. And I'm going to try to fill up across both these pages with a scribble. It's kind of a wet scribble. And start there, right? And now already, even though this is just gray, I've got something to start with, right? And so um, now any anxiety that I have about like, I don't know what to do on this page, it's out of the way because I've already put something on the page. So, well, okay, now what, right? So the now what sometimes is looking at where the wetter sections of this and just moving that around a little bit. This is a very beat up brush, very um, old brush, which again, sometimes is better. If you're feeling nervous about starting, when you sit down with all brand new materials that you've never used before, that kind of can increase your inhibition, right? Because you're like, oh, I don't want to mess it up. I don't want to get this brush dirty. Um, I don't know how to use this material. And um, I really, really encourage you to just go for it. Because look at how interesting this already is, right? So we drew with the dropper, which means that um, it kind of incises into the page a little bit and gets a little more pigment in those areas. And then I've moved the, the still wet pigment around. And now I'm starting to get something kind of interesting, right? So I'm going to pick up the 6B graph stone that we got in this box. And I'm going to go in with a kind of a different kind of mark maker. So using the side of the graph stone, and you can see it has a little bit of a warmer gray than that ink that I used, guys. 
And this is another advantage to working in an art journal as opposed to on a blank piece of paper is that especially when you're using the side of a material, you're also gonna pick up some of the texture from the previous page, which you can see happening here. So all of those little things will start to help you feel a little bit more comfortable with adding things onto this page. Okay. And I really like to work on a page that's maybe a little bit more damp <laughs> than um, than feels safe. And what I mean by that is like, okay, if I really started scribbling on this vigorously, I might tear through this paper. It's, it's pretty saturated with ink. And um, there's something about that that, um, you know, it feels maybe it's like art journal danger, right? Like extreme art journaling. I'm living on the edge. Will I tear this page and mess up the page that's before it? Maybe. And then I'll just have a different creative challenge to play with. Okay. So kind of inspired by Alice Neal today. She was using her brushes um, all at a long distance and painting these just beautiful portraits. So I'm experimenting a little bit with that kind of marking. Okay, so um, I'm noticing now, right? Like then I like to pause and look at the page and see what else is here or what could I do with this? And I'm noticing that it's kind of giving a little bit of the, um, what I'm seeing outside of my window right now, which has been a pretty gray, rainy day here. And um, even though there's a little bit of blue sky coming through, it is still pretty gray out there. So um, you can kind of go one of two ways at this point. You've got a good um, abstract background. Maybe there's some ideas about it, what it could be. Um, but it also could turn into something else. So I have a, a Polaroid sitting here on my desk of one of the buildings that's here on this property. And this is in warm colors. So it might be interesting to kind of go from these more cool grays into something that's a little bit warmer, so sepia tone Polaroid. So sometimes when I'm at a, I'm not sure what to do next point, I'll try picking up a couple different things and setting them down and uh, seeing how, seeing how I feel about what I see there. So I've got a couple other little things that are kind of in this same family. This is like the edge of something else that I cut out and I was doing some collage. Something I like about these two things together actually is the white line around the edge of this piece, which was the edge of the magazine page, and then the white border around the Polaroid. And so they kind of seem to be in conversation with each other. So I think I will go ahead and stick it down. And um, this is another good tip for if you're feeling blocked, is to try changing the speed that you normally work. So if you are a person that normally takes a lot of time and you know, you're not really um, working fast, try working fast. And if you're a person that normally works pretty fast, try slowing yourself down a little bit. You know, slowing down your mark making, pausing between switching materials, and even just something like that can get you out of the creative rut you might feel like you're in. Okay, so there I have my two pieces. And now what I like to do is look at it and see, okay, so what next? Like, which of these things do I want to accentuate more? Right? Is it those straight lines that are happening here, like the dark, dark black? Or is it the more organic shapes of this tree that I can see here in this foliage? Or do I want to go more towards these warm tones or again, more towards these dark black? So I think what I want to do first is to play a little bit with the black. So I'm using the Cricut pen that we got in this box. And this is a good um, kind of thinking tool for yourself to pause and just make some repeated marks while you think about what do I want to do next.
It's also kind of rhythmically satisfying to make marks get run off the edge of the page like this. You can if you listen closely, maybe hear the sounds that it's making. And that's pretty satisfying. I'm going to turn the page again. And I'm going to come over. I think I want to leave that. I really like the way that that looks. I'll come over to this edge. It's interesting because this side, because they're longer lines with the pen, it's not making that same satisfying noise that it was making on the other side. At least I get the satisfying click with the stick it. Okay, I'm gonna come back in with my messy breath. You just get those edges a little bit wet. And other things that I have here on my desk that might be kind of interesting to continue this line is to think about a different kind of a texture. So, so far I've got paper and polarized, but what if I put something on here that was a little bit more heavily textured? We kind of like the way that this little piece of ribbon seems to be in conversation with like the branches of the trees here, and yet the line work of it is more like this. I'm going to glue this down. And if you're using like a more thick glue, like Elmer's, um, just be careful to not let it settle too much into the gutter of your book. So I usually skip over it and just let the thicker thing have a little gap there. And I've got this little edge of a little bit more. So I can trim that off and decide if I want to put it, you know, another, I could put another piece right next to that. I could unravel it a little bit. Hey, Aaron, this is Lee. Hey. Hey, is there any way you can turn up your mic a little bit? It's a little low. Is that better? uh say something else is that better <laughs> a little bit better i'll try to keep my head <laughs> it's hard to have my head going one way so i'll try to i'll try to project more i'll put on my talking with older adults voice okay okay and just tell me if i get quiet again sometimes i start getting a little too into what i'm doing and i my voice gets softer I put on my yoga teacher voice instead. <laughs> All right. So at this point, um, looking at a page like this, I kind of have a couple things I could do. I could keep going, or I could set it aside for a bit, let the glue dry, and decide what I want to do next, which is I think what I'm going to do with this page is just to let that glue get at least a little bit more tacky before I start coming back to it. So I'll set this one aside. And go to another blank page that again isn't all the way blank. This is the art journal that I cut the hole in so that the little spikes could fit inside there and be shown all the way through. But this is still that's still a pretty blank page. So another thing that you can do with a blank page is kind of start with something, right? So like a piece of collage material or um, something to start you off that's a little bit provocative. And what I mean by that is not um, not like rated R provocative, but rather like thought provoking, right? or creativity provoking. So 
beautiful. The possibilities are beautiful. And so it leads you to think, what possibilities? Beautiful in what way, right? And so you start to ask questions. And then you can start to answer those questions with the media that you put down and what you explore and um, how you play with this idea. So since it's already a pretty pink page, I'm just gonna go for it with a bit more paint. And possibilities, this idea of, of possibilities to me always seems to be kind of exploding out from the center. There's possibilities go in all directions. And we'll start with that idea. And then um, again, already this page is starting to feel like things are happening here, right? It's not a blank page. So I want to now start to have the edge of that. This is like a little plastic packaging for a plastic bag from a store. I want to lose the hard edge of that a little bit. This is just white acrylic paint in a repurposed brush top container. And I'm brushing towards the edge so that a little bit of that acrylic paint will settle into the edge and help it stick onto the paper. It's like um, if you've ever done mosaic tile or um, maybe tile the countertop. It's that same idea. You're filling in that crack. And you're building up a texture that you can play with in a different way later. So what I said earlier was the possibility is beautiful and they can go in every direction. And as I was saying that, I was thinking about, okay, direction. So to me, that talks about arrows. So I was thinking I could start to draw a bunch of different arrows going out from this idea. And you can see that the wax crayon actually resists the quick art pen ink. So I'm I'm creating this interesting layering already. This is another thing where you can get kind of caught up in like, oh my gosh, what if the arrows aren't all exactly the same? Or what if they overlap wrong? Or some of them look funny. Don't worry about that, part, right? Like let it go and just let whatever happens happen. And I know that I'm saying that and that can be a hard thing for some of us to do, but it really is um, an important lesson in um, getting out of your own way in order to be creative. And you have to, a lot of times if you're feeling blocked or Stuff. It's that worry about um, I'm going to do it wrong, or that worry of I don't have anything to say right now, or um, I don't have anything important to say. And again, that's why an art journal practice can be really helpful actually for all of your art making, not just for your art journaling, but for any other creative practice that you do because. You have so much permission in your art journal to explore and to try things. And they don't all have to be masterpieces. And a lot of times I end up learning things in my art journal that I do end up applying in like mixed media art later. Right? I'll, I'll combine materials in a way that I maybe wouldn't on a big fancy canvas. But doing it in the journal gave me some bravery. Um, it maybe encouraged me to, to try something on a smaller scale that I can try again in a much larger way. So I'm just going to try to get a little bit more of that resist to show. Maybe darken it a little bit. It 
if you use a material in one way, like you know, using the, the very end of this to draw lines, also experiment with using the edge. So that's a, another another thing that can feel kind of uh, inhibiting when you're making art is is feeling like, oh, I'm drawing right now, so everything has to be a lot. Right, um, or I'm painting right now, so everything has to be a brush stroke. But instead, making lines with your brush and filling in whole areas with something that you would ordinarily make lines with. Sometimes we have to play tricks on ourselves when we feel stuck to get ourselves unstuck. out a little bit of concentrated watercolor now. So this page is pretty wet. I'm just going to paint right up to the edge of my red line in some of the areas. Something else that I like to do when I feel like I'm not really sure what I want to do today is to start with like a repeated process and then slowly start to just do like one or two of them. So like here, I could keep going with this orange watercolor ink and fill in the whole rest of the page up to the edge of the arrows. But then it's like not really, it doesn't feel as creatively satisfying. It feels a little bit more like I'm following a plan instead of expressing myself. Does that make sense? So, um, is coloring something in beneficial? Yes, in that it feels good and you're playing with color, that's good. But is it as creatively stimulating? Maybe not. Aaron, we got a question in the chat here. Yes. Uh, let's see here. Is that watercolor or gouache or acrylic red paint that you're using? What I'm using right now is um, watercolor, liquid watercolor, concentrated. So pretty, pretty translucent. So it's another thing that I like to do, right? This white that I used was a, actually a block out white. So very, very, very open. And now I'm using something that's very transparent. And again, this is one of those things that we kind of, um, maybe traditionally tell ourselves that we can't or shouldn't do. Um, my mom, who helps with uh, putting together the ephemera packs a lot of the time, uh, she was trained as a medical illustrator. And so she was very like precise about what materials she used together and how she used materials. And um, it's been really fun to encourage her to try mixing materials in different ways especially materials that she's like familiar with and has used in these very structured ways before. So this is starting to feel like maybe the possibilities are beautiful, right? Um, but something that I'm thinking about with that is um, what happens when they're not, right? What happens when, and I'm going to do something right now that might make you so I like, can why do you dream? But I want to do this on purpose because um, I think it's important for us to, to see what happens. I did just cheat though. I, I just gave myself a little bit like, well, wait, what's on the other page? So I'm gonna do it anyway. Like what happens if you do this, right? If you just like spill some black ink on a page that you were working on. And this is another point where sometimes we look at our the ink on our hands and the mess that we've just made, and oh my gosh, I ruined this page. And then we give up, right? We we like push our supplies away and we walk away from the page 
and we don't come back to it or we think like we've ruined it, right? And this is such, such, such an important opportunity to say, like, nope, I wonder what happens with this ink that's on my finger if I just start, oh, well, interesting, I'm getting some fingerprints on here. Like, that's kind of fun. I wonder if I can get some more fingerprints. Um, nope. Oh, there's one, right? And so, so then you have now come into a place of play with this thing that you thought was a disaster and kind of instead do something that becomes fun and interesting and wow, I'm glad I didn't just walk away from what I thought or worried was a mess that I couldn't recover from. So sometimes mistakes happen. A lot of times messes happen in art. And how can you make that mess instead into something really interesting and kind of maybe different than you otherwise would have done if you had been just using the materials in the same way you planned when you sat down. I have a big puddle of blocking there. And I'm going to wipe my finger off here for a moment so that I can switch to another material. So when I'm art journaling, I like to keep um, unscented water wipes near my desk or wherever else I'm working so that I can move on to another thing with a little bit less chaos. There's always chaos in the mix of slightly less. Okay, so I'm going to now take this black ink and start to move it around here as though, oh, I always plan to have this black ink on this page. Like, what if I take this spill and instead make it look like I meant to put it here? So again, you're going from like a spill to a splash to an intentional line. Aaron, we got a really good uh, question from Katie in the comments over here. Yeah. Um, Katie says, Katie asks, how do you get over or past a medium that you just don't like? For oh. example, oil pastels, the feel of them, or indie ink just being so disastrous. <laughs> okay, so let's start with the oil pastels. The first one is put them in the freezer and use them very cold. That will help a lot because um, oil pastels, especially as they're in your hands, they start feeling kind of like, ew, this is squishy. And then they get all over everything. Use them very cold. Use them in a cold environment if you can. Um, so that'll help. And then um, the other thing to do with them is to just like go for it with the mess. So kind of go to the other end. So if you have a heat gun or um, a hair dryer to some extent, um, but it'll splatter a little bit more, but use them hot and then just let them mess and then go over it with something else. So coating it with something and going over it with a different material later or scratching away, right? So so don't try to, um, a lot of times with, with a material like oil pastel, we get really attached to making something perfect and a lot of times we're working so small that we've made it impossible for ourselves. So if you work on like a really big canvas with oil pastel and you let yourself make big marks, you can actually get something that looks more real and maybe more satisfying. So those are my oil pastel tips. And then also give yourself permission to not like some materials. That's totally fine. Um, with, with India ink, um, you can kind of desensitize yourself to it, meaning like use it in small doses. That's why I really like this one that we featured in the box a while ago, is that it's a very small bottle. Um, have I spilled an entire 16 ounce bottle of India ink on the floor of my studio before? Yes, I have. Was it a really bad day? Yes, it was. Um, but 
what did I do before I cleaned it up? I laid some paper down in it. I like let it bleed up some things. I did some interesting things to make the mess not feel um, quite so catastrophic. Um, if it's on your carpet, oh, different story. Um, this is why I usually work on, um, I've talked to you all about this before. These are um, uh, dog pads for when you have puppies. And um, they're great for putting underneath your art because then you're a little bit less worried about the mess. Um, the other thing about the darkness of the India ink is to just like know that sometimes that very dark ink can also be something that offsets something really bright and beautiful, right? So um, the, the hot pink crayon is showing through this very, very dark black ink. And um, there's something really satisfying about that. It uh, feels good to look at that hot pink shining through. And so using what you know about materials that will resist can help it feel not quite so, like, oh, I don't like that material. Um, other thing to do, which I think we've done before, which is just paint an entire page with it. Paint the whole page black. Um, and if all of that doesn't work and you still don't like it and you've got that bottle of ink, then just get yourself some smaller containers, put a couple of drops in there, and make yourself a light gray wash. And then you've got something that you can use for lots of different reasons. Um, and you don't have that fear of Every time I use this, I make a mess. But um, full disclosure, I'm kind of a fan of messes. <laughs> Hopefully that was helpful. So I still have kind of a puddle of black paint going on over here. And you can see where when it builds up like that, it doesn't really resist anymore. So I'm going to go with that and just uh, let that black cover over in a few more spots. I think my favorite part on this page right now is here where the ink is going over top of the acrylic. A other big blocky spots. So I'm going to move that out of the way and bring my small journal into the picture so that I can use up some of the rest of this black ink on here. So this is another thing that I like to do if I'm stuck, is I'll go with a quote that I like or um, something I've recently heard. Sometimes it's something that someone has said to me. And I'll just start by writing that on a page and then giving a border. So painting around the edges of things can feel very containing and help you feel like, okay, well, I filled up this whole page, right? Sorry, because the, the edge is on, right? The border is on. So this page is, is feeling a lot more done than it did even a few seconds ago because I've got this black thing going around the edges. will help me use up the rest of this black. And this journal that I'm working in right now has, um, the paper has a little bit of a tooth to it. This is another thing that you can do with a, a material that you're not really sure about. Sometimes switching the paper that you're using. So if you've been using it on a very smooth paper, switch to paper that has some tooth to it. Or like a handmade paper, so some of those Scraps that I give you in the ephemera boxes, a lot of those, or the ephemera envelopes, a lot of those have a different texture to them. You tie up the material there. Let's go back to this page now. The blue has dried enough that I can keep playing with this. And since I've got this black on this brush, I'm just going to use up the rest of it again around the edges.
And here you can see where the, the glue actually makes a little bit of a texture, which I can play up a little bit. You can do this with other things too, like graphite will do this, but colored pencil will help to show a little bit of that edge. A bit of colored pencil that I can add on here for the texture of the polarized film. So a lot of times I'll let the colors that I use kind of help me decide what I want to do next. So I went from the gray to then the pencil, then the dark black, and then the warm and the dark here. And then it started going towards blue. And then I went a little bit more towards that to color pencil. And now I'm going to go even a little bit more. This is that blue acrylic. And what I'm doing at the edge there is kind of going again back towards the edge. So I'm trying to fill in that space between where the thing meets the paper of the journal. Right there. And what that will do is two things. It'll help it stay onto the page, and it also helps the eye kind of not know the order that things were created, which a lot of times is, is my goal when I'm art journaling, and especially if I'm working on a page over time, is, is to kind of confuse the viewer about the order that things happen on the page. And uh, by viewer, sometimes I just mean myself. So I don't necessarily mean that every art journal page I make gets seen by somebody, but um, kind of like making it clear that this is an evolving thing, right? This page has happened over time. It's demonstrating in some way a process that I've been through. I'm going to turn this slightly, and now I'm going to go back to a quick art time and. Um, at this point, what I like to do on a page, if I am interested in incorporating some writing, is I will try not to censor myself, meaning I'll try not to sit here and say, like, okay, I'm going to say this, because very often then we get stuck with, like, oh, no, I ran out of room, right? Or um, I didn't, maybe I spelled something wrong, um, which can happen. And um, again, this is your authentic space, so try not to censor yourself. So I am just going to start writing and see what happens. Again, I do not plan this out. So So today was about being present and quiet, getting things done. And I'm going to put items here because getting things done today felt like a, a whole thing. <laughs> like it was a, um, like it in and of itself was a job. Okay, so I've got the blue lettering here that's kind of balanced out by these blue brush strokes. And this page is starting to feel quite a bit more done, but this area here is bothering my eye. So I feel like I want either this to go back to like a white white or this to go to a very dark. So I have a little bit more of um, that same paper that that was cut from. And I think what I want to do is maybe just put a little bit of collage into that area. And it's okay if my text disappears a little bit. And it also, again, helps to layer over that Polaroid.
sabe dónde va, hay que buscar el empleo. Over on this page, but then now I don't have a blank page on this side because I have that little bit there. And I always like to see if I want to use these other pieces in some way. Sometimes I do, and sometimes I don't. I just better decide for the time being. Okay. I'm going to let that acrylic dry. And We'll go back to this one and these, as you can see the ink is still drying so what we'll do is just put a little bit of candy wax paper one of my favorite art journaling tricks because here's another point where you could say to yourself like oh the ink's not dry so i'm going to stop journaling right now even though i have time to do more pages but um, you can kind of use the process of art making as an excuse to stop when maybe we do feel like there are more things we want to do, but um, we told ourselves like, oh, I don't have room. Okay. So another thing to do if you have a blank page, or if you have a page like this, where maybe something's coming through from the page before, I know for some people that can be really hard, right? You you want to have a pristine new page every time. Um, that's not me. That's <laughs> I like the mess. But um, if you are a person that likes to start each page new and this is distressing to you, this little bit of ink that's showing through, um, you can start a page with just something that you found that you wanted to collage. So um, I don't think there'll be any wondering why I love this. This was from a calendar. And um, it's a good way to just kind of start a page When you know you want to keep journaling, but you're not really sure like what it's about yet, just taking something and starting with an entire image, or um, it can also be an entire solid piece of paper. So one of the cool things about you know how big scrapbooking has gotten over the past couple of two decades is. Um, it went from having kind of more kitschy images and papers and textures to having some pretty cool patterns that you can get. And um, those are just kind of good to have around for days that you want to keep journaling, but um, you are not particularly sure where you want to start. And I'm going to refold this. I'm doing what I um, like to always recommend when you're gluing something is to put the glue on the paper. And then if it's going to cover a big area, to put a fold into the paper and insert that into the gutter. And I moved where my fold was because I realized it was kind of going through the eye of, of the quill. So I didn't want to go right through this little crow's eye. Like a crow in the cold. <laughs> hey, Erin, we're a little over halfway through. Okay, thank you. Yep. All right. So now you might be looking at this and saying, but there's this like weird little edge here. What are we going to do about that? And that, again, is this creative opportunity to kind of say, well, what else do I have around in my space that I might fill in there? And this seems to be exactly right. I've got this nice gray. Um, I think I've showed this before, but when you're ripping a piece of something to collage, if you want the color edge to go all the way along the thing, then you're going to rip the part you want towards you. If you want the white edge of the paper, you're going to rip it away from you. So you can see this really clearly here. The part that I wanted now has the color going mostly all the way to the edge of that paper. This one has the white. And both things are useful, but it is just kind of a, a thing to know because if you wanted this collage item to kind of blend more seamlessly into what you have, then um, ripping that part towards you will get you that nice clean touch. So another trick, if I know this is going to overlap, I'm going to put the glue on there and lift it up through this whole part.
and then overlap it. So when I'm working in an art journal, I usually let things hang over the edges and I'll do trimming later because I sometimes like to wrap things around, right? So to kind of wrap this around to the next page or let it become a little bit ragged and then decide later what I want to do with it. Okay, so then we have this funny little hole up there. That's where the calendar went on the wall. And uh, luckily we've got this silver hanging piece so I can do something here where I just insert a little bit of a color that's somewhat in the same family over the top of that, just to hide that a little bit. But I think that's going to end up almost in the top of the Okay, so here's another point where you kind of can go back and forth between, well, isn't this just like sticking a piece of collage image onto a page? Like, how do I really make this mine beyond like adding other decorations to it? And this is another point of bravery, right? This is another point where you can kind of say like, what if I covered part of this image, right? What if I went in here and although I love this image and I love the, um, the topic here, as many of you know, um, what if I went in here with my block out white acrylic paint and decided that this white here was like the crow saying something. And so what if I put a speech bubble here? And um, with love and collected images, sometimes it's hard to do that, right? You might find this if you've got a really cool piece of ephemera or maybe it's a family photo and it feels really precious and I would just encourage you to trust your creative ability to make it into something even more special in your life now if it's the only existing image of like maybe a very long ago ancestor <laughs> Maybe scan it, maybe photocopy it, right? Um, but there is something special about it being this precious object and telling yourself that you, your creative process is valuable and important and it's okay to use it. And I've got this funny little speech bubble here for my crow to maybe say something. And I'm going to take, for right now, I'm going to take a pencil and just go along the edge of this speech bubble. And the acrylic is still really wet right now, so I can kind of scratch into it a little bit and start to define the edge of it. This is also going to make a little bit of a raised up texture that I can accentuate with it. And also get a little bit of paint on the end of your pencil and then it becomes a mark making tool. So this is another thing that's kind of fun to play with in your journal. If you're not really sure what the page is about yet, to give yourself a thought bubble or a speech bubble or something that you can uh, add content to later. So another little bit of permission, and this is something I often say to students of mine that are working on big projects, and I know some of them are art journal snack subscribers, um, is that they can do it in bite-sized pieces, right? They don't have to do all of it all at once. And sometimes even just sitting down and doing a little bit of journaling or working on a little bit of a big project um, can be really helpful in getting across the finish line in the end. Okay, so I'm just going to fold this over so we can see kind of where the edge of this page will be. And even just those two things that I did with the other collage piece and the speech bubble is now starting to make this page feel like mine. But I think I want to add one more element. I'm going to kind of go through that. Just 
something to make this a little bit more about this is the code maybe that I know, okay? <laughs> I know you very often see me ripping and cutting, but I do, I do use scissors <laughs> when I'm making marks. And so this part will also cover up a little bit where there's a, a funny little fold wrinkle here. And something to know if you're using glue stick on um, a tissue paper or one of these more. Um, porous paper, mulberry paper, is that it will be sticky on both sides. So don't break your own heart by sticking something down like this and then closing your journal and then realizing later that you stuck the pages together. And again, is that the end of the world? Nope. There's all sorts of things that you can do, even if you've done that to yourself. But um, it is just, you know, an awareness to have so that uh, you don't have to change what you're up to again. Now I also have this cut out part. Maybe what I'll do with that one is use a different material. So this is matte medium, again, in one of these little smaller containers. This is another uh, a little journaling hack that I like is um, the less brushes I have to wash while I'm working, the less brushes I have to worry about while I'm working, uh, I find the more creative I get and the more uh, permission I give myself to make messes because I'm not worried about like, oh no, that brush has a acrylic on it and I have to get up and go wash the brush or, you know, dry it out or whatever, and then I've stepped away from my journaling and um, something else grabs me, you know, distracts me from going back to it. So I'm going to put this matte medium on a little thick, which will cause some wrinkling in that thin collage paper. This, this collage paper is from a very thin magazine, and um, it will wrinkle a little bit. Can you go back to the pencil, add a little more texture into this. You can see, again, the unintended things that happen, and you just go with it. All right, so we'll let our little pro friend dry a little bit. And we get another piece of wax paper. Put it back in here. I want to show. What happens if a page is like started, but you're really not sure what else to do with it. So this is a page that I sprayed some ink on and wiped some other things. I did this in the studio the other weekend when I was um, figuring out what things were dried up on my shelves and what to get rid of. And I just kind of made this big mess and let it dry and then didn't do anything else with it. So um, there's a couple different things that I'll do when I kind of come back to a page like this. Um, what's bothering me about this page is it all kind of seems to be one value, meaning there's not um, what I've talked about before. One of my um, one of my favorite professors and art teachers and artists always used to say that your image needs a bride, meaning it needs a focus. It needs something who's like the center of attention. And um, right now, this doesn't really have it. Right, it's all kind of um, the same. And so there are a couple different ways that you could do that. I could go back to this red paper that I was using on that other page and kind of put that across there. The only thing that, you know, just kind of stands out to me about that is like this color combo has some association. 
So maybe that's not the path I want to take. To go to a different piece. This one's kind of interesting because it has these stars and it's dark. I don't know, that's not really doing it for me either. So sometimes it's about trying a couple different things and seeing what maybe sounds interesting. And sometimes it's kind of absurd, right? This is the front page from one of the books that I cut up for you all. Um, something like that is a, an interesting place. Now, this book paper is very old. And when I put glue on it and fold it, it's probably going to tear, especially if I put it across the gutter. And also knowing that there's some texture on this page. And I am doing that on purpose because I think it's going to be kind of interesting to have that. Yeah, you can see when I when I score it with my fingernail, it, it rips it at the center. So these are um, a little text about pronunciation there. But now you can see I have kind of a focus for this page, right? So now I'm going to go back in with this green that's already on the page and kind of bring that texture that's underneath back onto this. And then the word that's really standing out to me here is the repetition of errors. And then let's start here. So I've got error, error, master both problems at once. <laughs> so that's kind of interesting because it's kind of the two errors, maybe these are the two problems, and the ability to master both of them. So as I was resting my hand over that, it felt like the next thing that I wanted to do was to put my hand here. Please, I can take my ring off before I take my finger off. So as much as possible when I've done like cut out words like that, I try not to draw through them. So there's the hand that's going to master the problem both at once. <laughs> and then I'm going to go in with um, a little bit of, this is like a mod pod of all sorts of stuff. It was gray acrylic and then it got some other things into it. I'm going to hide that edge a little bit in a couple places. It's kind of good to play with this idea of mastering errors because you know the whole world likes to tell us that there's right and wrong and when it comes to making art. <laughs> there's a right way and a wrong way to do it, but I really, really would like you to let yourself try the wrong ways in your art journal. Just try things that you think won't work. If something really doesn't work, keep going. what you can turn it into because you can learn so much from it. And if you don't even end up liking it after that, then no problem. Just paint over it. Um, okay, so this is now starting to feel a little bit more like it has a plan. Um, and probably what I'll do is go back in with dark 
more later. They also have this little strap here on the back that I'll probably incorporate in. I'm just going to put one more page, and then I would love to invite people to share a little bit. So here's a page that I started, again, like kind of making some messes, working with some materials in different ways. There's a little bit of wax on this paper. There's some watered-down acrylic, and there's a little bit of colored pencil. And um, sometimes if I'm not sure what I want to do, and I'll show you a different example of this, is I will just write one word, right? Just like pick one word, whatever it is that comes to mind, and just write that word. And then sometimes what comes next will occur to you as you're doing it. You maybe thought you knew what I was going to write, and you may have seen me hesitate because I had one idea, and then as I was doing it, it went a different direction. And instead of continuing on to write the word try, I wanted to show this with writing the word trust. This is again something that can be really helpful in your journaling practice is, is to trust that you will figure something out and to trust that the art materials will support you in doing that. And to trust that it's okay if you make a mistake or you make a mess and that the mistake or the mess that you kind of labeled it as very often can become something Maybe more interesting than the thing you had intended to create. So do try, but more importantly, try. All right, so while that is drying, I would love to see if anyone would like to share anything or um, maybe ask any questions about certain types of stuff or blocks that you've experienced. All right, let's see here. If you want to either digitally raise your hand. Oh, looks like we got Catherine. <laughs> Let me replace the spotlight. All right, all you, Catherine. Hello. I just want to say thank you, first of all, because I always have trouble letting go. So the, even just doing something in real time and not like stopping and pausing the replay has been very hard for me, but also awesome. So um, this is totally out of my comfort zone, but I made something in real time. So I started with uh, uh, our, the Flint Institute of Arts magazine had this in there. So I, I had scribbled first and I used um, just some ink, some regular ink that was a little bit water soluble at first but not much <laughs> and then I thought that looked cool to go with that and then I have the sari ribbon string and some lunar paste for my border and just some words to you know freedom you know unlimited you know to stop my brain from overthinking so thank you so much <laughs> freedom storyteller unlimited yes yes <laughs> Yes, for art journaling and like remembering that you can apply those labels to yourself. Thank you. And yeah. thank you for the bravery of, of working in real time. Because <laughs> it is different. I can't just go, oh, wait, no, let me, yeah. let me go again. Yeah. 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 And a fun magazine just for women empowerment. My mom is one of four sisters and they, they, they did water or synchronized swimming. So I, I named all these skiers after them. I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> so I didn't do a speech bubble, but I got my aunts in there. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you.
<laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, so let me replace. And let's see here. Anyone else? You can either uh, raise your digital hand or your physical hand. I'll be scanning the people in the in the gallery, I guess you could say, right? Let's see. If not, that's okay too. I think that might be that might be it for now. So with that, okay, I'm gonna throw it back over to you, Dr. Aaron. Great. So we can go back to another page that I started a while ago. Um, because it has some of the materials that we've been playing with today. So it's that same ink that I was playing with earlier. And I had started this page. I think I did these on the very first live stream for this um for this journal. And then I did some of the other parts, these lines I did on another day. And then it's just been sitting here, right? I've been kind of going to different pages and I created these lines for myself to write something, but haven't done the writing part yet. So um, again, this is one of those opportunities where you could write some words or you could kind of look through some of the other ephemera and see is there something I can do that again, gets me out of my own way and so what I'll do sometimes is I'll cut up like headlines from a newspaper or headlines from magazine pages. And I'll cut one or two of those so that the words are all separate and then challenge myself to rearrange them in a way that makes sense for me. And you can make whole poems this way, right? This is how the surrealist wrote poetry. Um, but it's a great way to kind of start and art journaling page or to finish a page that you're not really sure about. Right? And I like the way that these um, really worn book pages look on the rest of the page and it plays really nicely with this orange. So, okay. Words and out <laughs> so this actually is kind of funny because it makes me think of and again I did not set out to do this but it makes me think about something that happened today which is a game that I play with um, some of the older adults I work with where we go to this it's, it's called the Frontistary, and it's the dictionary of obscure words. And we go through them and find a different word, and I give them hints trying to figure out what the word means, and then um, we'll look up the etymology of it, and we'll play some different word games with it. And then I always give them a word to try to work into their lunch conversation. <laughs> and today we could not figure out how to pronounce it and they were like but Aaron we can't do this if we can't pronounce the word which was funny because um nobody would have known the word anyway um even if so if they'd mispronounced it or not no one would have known whether they were right or wrong and it goes back to this whole idea today um and I'm cutting up another part of this page which also kind of goes with this. So this part says, the earlier one, the inquiry was not limited to any, to any single problem such as testing, but was open to any way of throwing light on art and I like, I like that in there. 
So what I'm not super fond of is losing that edge. So I'm going to put a little bit of that back in. And now that page is starting to feel quite a bit more. I might go back in later and maybe do one or two more things, but I think I'll probably let that page be. There's another page in here. So this page is kind of similar to that other page I was playing with where it has, um, this is the glue raised up on here. And Again, it's got that problem of there's not really a main focus on this page, but there is a lot that will resist. So this page also has some examples of where the page stuck together, so it changes the way the ink looks when I put it on to those areas that are the grit and more rough. I'm gonna switch to a very different material. So since we were talking about materials that people don't like, chalk pastel is very often one of those, but these pan pastels are really nice because you don't have to have quite as much contact with your fingers with them. Although I don't really mind chalk pastel, but I know for some people it's not a comfortable feeling <laughs> or the sound that it makes on paper. And so what this does is shows how um, with a page that's generally all very light, even just darkening a few places will start to help it feel a little bit more like something interesting could happen here. Maybe the interesting thing that could happen is what the future looks like. Now. So I found this um, looks like maybe from fabric. I found this on the ground at work, and it's just in the um, the main living room area. So maybe came off of came off of somebody's fabric. I also have this. So these are two things that have just kind of been sitting on my desk. And um, sometimes I'll give my, myself the challenge of just using up some of the things that have just been sitting around and then making myself make meaning of the speech. So sometimes we sit down to art journal and we know exactly what it is that we need or want to express about, right? There's something intense going on and we need to express about it. And then sometimes we're just like, we just want to be creative, but we're not really sure what it's about yet. So this is kind of a, um, a sticky thing to do to your scissors. So again, those um, wet wipes are a good idea to have around if you're going to be continuing on with your journaling process. But I find this is a way to keep myself going faster to do the whole back of the paper and then cut the work apart. So that while I'm sticking them down, I'm not stopping in between each one to put glue on each word.
people you want to help the most are usually the same people I'm actually going to change this a little bit and put this up here. This is the important part of this. The other text is less important. So thinking about circling things or underlining things, making text that you put down really be the standout part. So it's very clear that this is the this is the most important part of this of these words that I'm using. And so for this, I'm actually going to use this is an ultra matte medium, which means it's going to be kind of dull over these these words. And so when it dries, and I'll post it later on this, um, these words will kind of blend into the background a little bit. You can get this same effect by using regular matte medium or glue with tissue paper over the top of words that you want to have disappear a little bit. And then if you don't want pencil lines, but you do want texture, you can use the back of a paintbrush. Just kind of push that medium around to get a little bit more of that texture. And then since this page is about trust. I just want to show another thing that requires a little bit of trust, which is to let things run and drip and to not worry. <laughs> so I'm going to take a little bit of, of ink with the dropper bottle, the little pipette that we got in the previous box. And I'm going to tilt this page and just let it drip down. Trusting that something interesting will come from that. And trusting that even the messes can turn into something beautiful. You can see that settling into where those lines are that I scratched in. And this, this ink that I just used has a little bit of gold glimmer to it. Fun to see to see what happens with that as it the same mesh and brush to kind of leave and find the edge of that a little bit. Uh, let that dry and settle a little bit. And um, a couple other things that I wanted to say about how to get unblocked is to think about and watch yourself as you're making marks and as you're journaling. Like, where are you making repeated marks and what are those marks doing for you? Like, how are you, um, how are you responding to those kinds of marks that you're making? Because very often, they're doing something for you and it's enjoyable, or maybe it's like a frustration that you're getting out. And then um, to keep a catalog of those things in your mind. So if there's a type of mark making that you notice makes you feel kind of soothed after you do it, then intentionally doing that sometimes, right? Or um, if there's a type of mark making that you know 
tends to increase your frustration and you're coming to your art journal at a time where you're not really sure you really want to keep going, maybe don't do that, <laughs> right? Um, give yourself permission to do the things that are fun and enjoyable or helpful. Um, your art journal shouldn't be your job. Um, or say that my mostly love my job. Um, It shouldn't be, let's see, it shouldn't be, um, it shouldn't feel like labor. Maybe that's what it is. It should feel useful and good <laughs> while you do it. So I'm very excited about what's going on with this page right now, and I'm really curious to see what happens when that ink dries. We have about five minutes left, so if anyone has a burning desire to share, you should let us know. Otherwise, I'll keep playing the thing. Thank you. All right, let's go to Cynthia. Cynthia. <laughs> okay. So this this really was an evolution from the beginning of it. So I had this little piece of paper that got messed up, but there was a rainbow on it. It was an old piece of paper I found in my father-in-law's stuff. So I glued it on there and I was continuing the rainbow. And then I kind of done like, it was kind of supposed to look like valleys and stuff. And I'd drawn a tree over here and I didn't like it at all. So then I had this little picture of a, a stat that I've been kind of playing with um, texture and embossing and stuff and so I covered it up and then I still I kind of needed like she's all up there and she needs something to look at so this little picture and it kind of got messed up it got a little wet this is a little picture I had printed off in here of the ship that my grandmother immigrated over onto it's called the Sestrian and um she 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 was three years old and um she she came from england on that ship when she was three years old and fun fact they came right after the titanic they literally sailed through the wreckage of the titanic so that was our little family uh weird story but anyway that's the little sestrian the a little picture i had of the sestrian so the statue is kind of sad i don't know if she's looking out at the ocean rainbow i don't know it just happened yeah. So, wow. <laughs> so interesting. Thank you for sharing that. And, and thank you for also sharing like, yeah, that part got a little messed up, right? Because that yeah. happens, but you can still make a really interesting page out of it. Oh yeah, I put your music down yeah, on there too from like two boxes back, I think. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Uh -huh. So fun. All right. Looks like we got Darla Joe wants to Hey, um, guys, I can't figure out how to turn on my screen from, you know, uh, for video. Um, let me see if I can figure it out here. All right, we'll come back to you. Turn on your yeah. video. All right. Sounds good. All right. So while we're waiting for Darla to do this, I would love to invite people to share on Mix um, what things help them get unblocked. Like, what are their strategies? So, like, let's crowdsource this, right? Like, what do you do um, to help you get unstuck when you feel stuck? Or what has worked for you in the past? Um, and also, like, say, like, hey, everyone, I'm stuck. Give me some ideas. And then maybe we could help to support each other for this. Because this is one of the things that I really love about Art Journal Snacks and our community at Art Snacks is this ability to, to support each other in our creative practices. All right. Looks like we got uh, Shelly. Are you able to turn on your camera? Yeah. There we go. Hello. So, um. Hang on, it told me to unmute. I don't know how well this is gonna show up. So this is something that I found and I thought I turned the blur off, but it came back on. So this is, uh, yeah. So 
Yeah, and Aaron, I know it's a bird. I I I like birds too. It is. This is not working. This is very oh, frustrating. Your face, right there. Yep. Now we can see. Okay. So this is a um this is a transfer that I I made this like years and years ago, and I just found it attached to a magazine page, and I know it's hard to tell, but it's already I've, on the back. I've started peeling it away. So this part is translucent not transparent and this i'm still pulling the magazine off so i'll put this on mix because it looks like we're almost out of talent time but i was excited that this thing still worked so yeah. i did this with um uh just medium yeah okay. layers of it until it dried I, le I did learn that in, I think it was a printmaking class that I had taken. Oh, now I'm dropping, dripping water all over my computer. Oh, well, <laughs> it's only money. So yeah, I'll um, let y'all know how this turns out. I was thinking of putting it on the page I was working on today, so. Really great. Thank you for sharing that. Sure. We'll pop in. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Darla Joe. did you figure out how to put on your uh, your video? I don't think so. Um, can you see what I'm focusing on? No. no, shoot. Sorry, guys. Maybe next time. It's okay. Uh, let's go to Catherine. <laughs> I share this on mix, but again, I'm, as I say, getting unstuck is my thing. I found a, I had a straw on a sucker and I just blew paint around this page. I still have no idea what it's going to do. But after I did this, I made three other pages in my journal. <laughs> so, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I might just leave it, right? And then a happy accident, I was trying out a new medium with gold leaf. And it created this blue. Just, it reacted with the, me with the medium. So I had no idea. I just wanted to see what it would do. So I have this cool blue. <laughs> so random things, but. I think once you get unstuck, I like what happens after it, right? Even if nothing happens with the page that helped me, it inspired me to do other things. Like I saw coral in that. So I made a couple sea themed um, things. So <laughs> super fun. Right. Well, thank you folks for sharing and thank you for everyone for joining us today and um making marks and trying new things and getting unstuck and hopefully this is helpful and um let's see what else can i say a little sneak peek i'm done with the little you know like how you get the little ephemera envelopes in your box i i just finished a couple of days ago fin filling the little one so for our next box we're getting going with um some really really great ephemera for next time so I know some people have already finished their journals for uh, for this round, which is amazing. Uh, so please do share on Rick and on Instagram. We love to see what you're up to. And thank you for joining us. And we've got one more live stream for this box. Aaron, you seem a lot more relaxed than you did at the beginning. You had a lot of energy you were putting on those pages. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that the case, but that was the case because I thought, wow, she's got some energy pin up or something going on there. <laughs> well, you should have heard the conversation Lee and I were having before you all started. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> but a little journey always helps. I mean, that's that's why I've been doing this practice for you know most of more longer than I haven't done it at this point. So. Yeah. Um, well, that was my biggest lesson. I thought. When I get frustrated or I got some tension build up, I'm going to get the journal out and do something yeah. like you did. Yes. Make a mess, fill some, fill some ink, see what happens. I'm going to make a bumper sticker of that. Aaron, can I just uh, uh, sneak in Darla Joe because you figured out how to put on our video? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Darla Joe. Oh. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Is that better? Can you hear me? Yes, we got you now. Thank okay. You. Yes, thank you. Um, so this is a photo out of um, the ACLU magazine that came recently. And I don't know this gentleman, but he's quite a uh, striking 
gentleman in, in a nice, beautiful suit. And I don't know why, but I felt compelled to remove the, the photo and, and uh, see if I could um, maybe do a collage. And what I ended up doing is trimming out his body and on one side of the paper uh, that I had already pre-painted with gold and gray, um, I just put the outline up here, the remaining uh, thing of the photo, and then uh, put him over on the other side. And again, it's kind of a, a gray and gold background, but it went with the gray and the gold that he's wearing. And uh, I just thought that was really unique. And I think I'm going to leave it that way. Yeah. I'm, I'm not really feeling like I, I want to ruin that because it's, I don't know, it's kind of a neat message in a way. Mm. Yeah, that's so great. I'm so glad you got your camera going to show us that. It's a, it's a really powerful page, just that the the balance between it. And I agree with you. Sometimes it's important to yeah. know. I'm going to stop there. That's plenty. Yeah. <laughs> but I, and, I like that, that gold background with the gray. It's kind of yeah. handsome. <laughs> Very. Uh, well, thanks for fitting me in. Yeah, and thanks for also the the fingernails and the ring. As someone said, they they also went with the page really nicely. So oh, <laughs> well, how about that side? <laughs> yeah, very good. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so so great. Excellent. All right, thank you guys for uh, going a little bit longer. I thought it was worth it. Um, and. Um, I'm going to stop recording and then uh, I'll take it from there.